What's up? It's your girl K Gaines, and I'm here with um, another tutorial for you all. We're going to do a comic book effect, and uh, we're going to use Illustrator and Adobe um, in conjunction with each other. And uh, we're really going to use a little bit from each to kind of make create this type of effect here. Um, and I, I am going to split this in two parts. I'm going to show you how to do the face first. And that is this tutorial. And the second tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this kind of fun stuff here. So let's go ahead and jump right in. What I have here, this is the portrait that I'm going to use. This is the picture of the guy that I'm going to use. And what I want to do is I want to make him look like this. So um, the easiest thing that I think that I want to do is I want to use Live Trace in Illustrator. And what that is, is that's just going to make it kind of a quick vector image. And because this is kind of a rough looking kind of image, I think that'll work out. And so what I want to do is, it's okay if your picture is in grayscale or a color, I would actually recommend that you uh, convert your picture to grayscale. So what I would do is go to Image Adjustments and Desaturate, okay? And even if you think you have a grayscale photo or a black and white photo, go ahead and desaturate it as well because you never know what's kind of, what other kind of colors are in there. So um, for this one, I'm going to, I need to make this a reasonable, reasonably sized image. So I'm just going to change this to about 20%. And um, I'm working as if I'm working for something for the web. But if you do have something that you want to print or something that you do want to put on like a t-shirt or something, make sure you keep it big because at the end of the day, this is going to be a raster image instead of a vector file. So go ahead and um, what I want you to do is go to image adjustments and curves. And we'll actually go to brightness and contrast first. Because what we want to do is we want to make sure that Illustrator knows that this is going to be the whitest part. This is going to be the darkest part. And that's going to help with the contrast. So I'm going to bring up my brightness just a bit. I'm going to bring up my contrast just a bit. And that kind of makes it more known of what's going on. And then what I want you to do is I want you to do, it's going to be the same kind of effect, but we're going to use the curves. And I'll show you why we use the curves. The curves has an eye, eyedropper tool here that says that this is going to set my black point, this is going to set my gray point, and this is going to set my white point. And so what that means is with the black point, whatever I click, that means that is the blackest, darkest point. So if I click this, of course nothing's going to change because this is clearly the blackest point. But if I were to make a mistake and say the nose was the blackest point, everything else kind of follows suit with that. So um, you actually kind of want to play around with that so that you get some good contrast. And because um, I want his ears to be a little more prominent, I'm going to lie a little bit about the, about the darker point. So, uh, play around with that. I actually already have an image, and this is what my image looks like, okay? After I did my brightness and my contrast, and I also did uh, the curves. So, what I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this photograph in Illustrator so that we can live trace it, okay? So, I already have Illustrator open. And what we're going to do is open what is for me called portrait two and um don't laugh at my don't laugh at my stuff so this is this is what we got oh I opened the wrong one I apologize portrait two portrait two So we got that one, and you, like I said, you might want to make this manageable. You can either scale it down, or I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And this is what we got. Now I'm going to select the image, make sure these blue lines are around it, 
And if you are in CS5, you're going to see a little button up here that says Live Trace. And I don't think that it's much different amongst um, different versions. But you should have a little button that says Live Trace. So click Live Trace, and it's going to do it automatically. But of course, you're going to need to make some adjustments. Now, already so far, it's kind of looking like that image that we already have. Okay? So, what you want to do is play with your threshold and play with your minimum area. You can also play with the presets and see what, um, see if you see something there that you like. But I'm going to show you how to do it um, by itself. So, I just mess with the grayscale, and this is when it'll bring in more colors or, 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 or what have you. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the threshold. Now, the threshold basically means that the higher that you bring it up, the more, um, the more shading you will get. And I want some shading, but I don't want a whole lot because... When you look at it, it kind of looks weird. You kind of can't really see his nose. You can't see his mouth. So I'm going to play with the threshold until I feel like I get like I, I get somewhere that I like. And that's still a little bit too much for me. And um, the minimum area here, the min area here means that the higher I take this up, the smoother it's going to get. So that means the smoother it's going to get, the less white spots you're going to get. Take that up. It's going to smooth right on out and you don't have any white spots. So go ahead and play around with this and see what it is that you like. Um, it's okay if you kind of find a spot where everything doesn't connect. That's fine. I'm going to teach, I'm gonna show you how to uh, fix that. So I already have my EPS. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to, whatever you like, you're going to save as. And I want you to save it, excuse me, I want you to save it as an Illustrator EPS. And when you just save it, you're just going to save it in, in file format. And you're going to have another dialog box come up. And you're just going to click OK through all of that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Photoshop and open your Portrait 2 EPS. Okay. Or whatever you name it, your EPS. Now, like I said, if you're doing this for print, you're going to want to keep it the same size. And if you, when you import it into Photoshop, you're going to want to keep it CMYK color. Now, because I'm only doing mine for web, I'm going to make it RGB. And I'm going to keep it at 72 pixels or DPI. Okay. So we're going to open that up, and this is how it's going to look. And um, like I said, half of the work is, is, is already done. Now you just have to color it. And I'm going to show you how to do flat coloring, much like we have here. Um, but if you're feeling if you're feeling adventurous, feel free to go ahead and do some extra shading and adding stuff. And it is my belief that some of the stuff here was drawn in, like his jawline and all this kind of stuff. So if you want to draw any of that stuff, then go right ahead. But I'm just going to teach you a quick colorization. Now, what I want you to do next is I want you to get rid of all this white and um, let me make this bigger. But I want to get rid of all this white. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use, I'm going to get my magic eraser tool. And the easiest way to do it is just to say, get rid of all the white. And... I'm actually going to undo that, and I'm going to make this unclick contiguous, and all the white should leave. So, that was quick, easy, and painless, and now you just have your vector image like so. Um, now, to draw on top of it, we're going to use the pen tool. So, make sure, select your pen tool, or push P, and make sure that your pen tool is, is drawing as, uh, as shape layers instead of paths, Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make a flesh-like color for his face and his ears. And we're going to come back and put white on his um, eyes. So get a flesh-like color. I like to just pick a swatch and kind of move from there. Pick that. 
and, and see how you like it. And the good thing about a shape layer is when you make a shape layer, it's going to come on its own layer. So you don't have to, um, you don't have to make a new one. So I'm going to put this underneath here. And it's going to look like we've kind of got it colored in. And I'm not in love with that color. I suck at picking a uh, flesh tone color, but we'll go with that. That'll work. Okay, and you want to do the same thing to kind of get your ears. And and as I said, this this ear is not all the way in. So if you need some help, you can use um, you can use your original portrait as a guide. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unlock this layer by taking the lock and dragging it to the trash can. And I'm just going to bring this straight into here. And we're going to try to match it up as best as we can. I think that's pretty solid. And I'm just going to follow the curvature of the ears. And I'm going to do it like that. And with your pen tool, you're just making points on like where every curve is and that's going to help you so that you don't have to kind of curve it out uh, you just put an anchor point at every different okay and if I take this one off excuse me it's my portrait then that's what I have and I need to match the color and we'll do that, and we will do it again for the other ear. Same thing, you just want to put your anchor points on any different level, or on any different curve. And like I said, that's going to help so that you don't have to use your convert tool to kind of convert things. Now, you may need it to move your paint up here you can use your convert anchor tool or you can use your direct selection tool and you can just select the line and bring it right on up like so and that's probably what I would do uh, here we go make sure that everything is just working and it looks that way and so like I said we're going to get some white going and just color the eyeball there and you're going to use your pen tool and do the same exact thing you may you may be able to hide in the dark lines and the black lines but that looks pretty solid to me I'm, I've always been a fan of a geometric kind of illustration um, for this type of effect anyway And this is just quickly showing you how to do it. And so far, it you know, it, it, it's, it's a pretty good comparison. Um, and like I said, they probably did some drawing. And if you want to do something like that, feel free. And what I want you to do next is I want you to select your shapes. And I want you to push shift, select all your shapes, and select your vector live traced image. And... It's easy to go from the top, go to layers, go to group layers, and what you're going to do is it's going to give you a group, uh, a folder with all your stuff in it so that everything is together and you can move it like so. And that's going to help in part two. And you can double click it and rename it. I'm just going to rename mine to face. And that's the first part of this tutorial. And uh, come back for the second part so we'll show you how to make a complete image like, like this one here. Alright.